and it takes a second to there we go okay we are recording um do we feel comfortable just jumping right in or do we want to yeah. go to the book and review a couple things first i'm good just jumping in okay we'll jump in and then i'm gonna pull the book up and have it open on the side so that way um if we run into stuff we can jump back and forth and kind of go over all of it do 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 Oh, don't open it up. Why do you do this? I've set my preferences like 12 times. Open with this guy. Okie dokie. A primary RNA transcript contains which of the following at the five prime end seven methyl guanosine yes. cap yeah yeah it is the cap uh this is more just kind of like know it or you don't um remember when we talk about dna rna and stuff we have a a three prime end and a five prime end and we always build we make sure Remember, it's three to five, right? Nope, yeah. five prime, five prime to three prime. The makes it in the makes it. Five prime, three prime. It builds it. Five, the five actual three. building of it. The strand that's being built is built five prime to three prime when it's built. So when we begin and we start to build RNA, same it's the same thing with RNA. DNA and RNA are essentially they're not the same thing, but RNA is just a copy of um, of the DNA. Uh, so rather than like it's a very very similar process to like the duplication of DNA, um, just that you're only going to have a set chunk that you're going to you're going to make you're going to copy so that way you can go and make the proper proteins. So Ooh. amino Ooh. acyl T RNA synthetases amino acid activating enzymes with which of the following Ooh. occur in mul multiple forms. For each amino acid, recognize specific tRNA molecules and specific amino acids. Except any of the 20 amino acids or interact directly with free ribosomes. Specific tRNA. Yeah, it's B, specific tRNA molecules and specific amino acids. This is when we'll start getting into, like, we'll start talking about, like, the, the codons, anticodons. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah, we're, like, a very, like, a specific, you have, like, AUG is our start codon, right? Mm -hmm. And that codes for methionine. <clears throat> so each of these is going to code for a specific amino acid in order to build our polypeptide chain. And then our, we get all the different folds and all that good stuff and the different types of bonding, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anticodons are present in which of the following? Transfer RNA. Yeah, our transfer RNA. Uh, if you've done the stuff, remember with ribosomal RNA, there are two different sizes, right? Two different parts, components of ribosomal RNA. Remember that? at all mm -hmm. remember there's like a uh, i just remember there's like a 16 s or whatever it's called and like a 20 something s does that ring a bell that sounds vaguely familiar hey let me pull up the book real quick and find that Ribosome RNA, our DNA. 
And I'll put in here. Yeah. How's it going 80s, 60s, 40s, and then it gets smaller. And once you're at an RNA, I see like 28s and 18s. Yeah. It's so random. I don't. He didn't really talk about it much. <laughs> yeah, it's not like crazy important. There'll be a question or two thrown in about those. Um, <clears throat> To do, let's see, transcription, maybe in the translation portion. That's our tRNA. Here it is. We're talking about this. Um, big ones that we talk about. So, yeah, so what this that's talking about, the different ones. There's a 40S and a 60S. So what it's talking about is that there's two subunits. There's subunit one and subunit two. 40S and 60S, that's referring to like, they took a glass and filled it with these different proteins and shook it up real good like a snow globe and then timed it to see how quickly it settled to the bottom. And that's how they got those 40S and 60S. Right. So the 40 S. It's like if this is 40 and this is 60, right? These two, you combine these two together, the subunits, they come together as one and they form an 80 S. It's just referring to like the 40 plus the 60 when they join together, their new sedimentation rate is then 80 S. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, so there will be a couple, and we'll, I'm sure we'll see a handful of them as we go through this, these quiz questions. But, ooh, no one will see the answers. But, yeah, that's what we get when we talk about ribosomal RNA. Chlor chloram phenicol acts by binding to the peptidase cell wall enzyme, binding to the FMET tRNA, Changing the shape of the mRNA or inhibiting peptidyl transferase activity. Mm -mm. So this is another one of those. It's in the book. Um, Chloramphenicol, it's an antibiotic. Um, that specifically is going to inhibit protein synthesis. So its job is like when you treat somebody with with this kind of stuff, like I said, it's a medication used in management of treatment of superficial eye infections, bacterial conjunctivitis, and otitis externa. Um, it inhibits protein synthesis. So when we look at the answer choices that we have, um, inhibiting the peptidyl transferase activity right there, this is how it's going to inhibit our protein synthesis. So it literally it binds onto the peptidyl transferase, shuts it down, and prevents bacteria um, from producing new proteins. Essentially, and then when it can't produce new proteins, it can't perform its, its like its necessary cellular functions, and it dies. Again, this is just one of those. This is a question. Wouldn't surprise me if it popped up on the test just because it's one of those kind of random ones um, that like it's literally did you read the book and memorize this one little random tidbit of information. So. DNA biosynthesis occurs from which in which of the following five prime to three prime three GUG codon three prime to five prime or methionine amino acid immediately we look at this. And we know with DNA, RNA, it's going to be one of the prime ones. So which one do we think it is? Five to three. Yeah, mm -hmm. DNA biosynthesis occurs from five prime to three prime. The way that he can ask this question can get a little tricky. You can change the way that you ask this sort of question. And on boards, they can do this as well. Where you can say, like, DNA polymerase 
travels blank to blank. And you'll have five prime to three prime and three prime to five prime. In this case, so DNA is biosynthesized, five prime to three prime, right? But it travels um, travels along the parent strand, blank to blank. Traveling along the parent strand is actually, it travels three prime to five prime. Does that kind of question, does that make sense as to why it's reverse mm-hmm. like that? Um, it's n- I'm not super common that he'll ask a question like this. Just if you do see one, um, I feel like I've seen that pop up on boards at one point. So just keep it in the back of your minds. Just read the question carefully and figure out what it's asking. Drawing pictures of this stuff helps immensely. DNA occurs in four major structural forms. Which of the following structures was described by Watson and Crick? First of all, who are Watson and Crick? They were the first ones to map out kind of the the structure of DNA. Yeah, they're the very first ones to figure out like the double helix type structure of Mm -hmm. DNA and kind of like create that, that rendering of what it would look like. So... Which type of D of DNA did they did they describe? Yeah, it was a B, yeah. Yeah, B DNA. This is also known as right right handed DNA, uh, and contains ten base pairs per turn. So cool. this is going to be these. We have our B DNA. Which is the one described by Austin and Crick. That's the one we think about. It's right-handed. That's very important. Do you think think way, way back to the very beginning when we started talking about... Um, do you remember when we talked about secondary structure mm-hmm. of, D- mm-hmm. of DNA? Do you remember what those two... The two secondary structures that we talked about? Sorry, not not as a DNA of of proteins, secondary structures of of proteins, of beta pleated sheets and alpha helices. Yeah, and the alpha helices, and we talked about how the alpha helices are right-handed because it's more thermodynamically and more energetically stable. So that's the same thing here. Our DNA is also right-handed instead of left-handed because that right-handed is more stable and we don't want our dna being unstable because that is a big no-no okay any questions about dna pertaining to this question i guess hey cool uh dna replication is described as which of the following Synthesis from of DNA from DNA. Exactly. Synthesis of DNA from DNA. Uh, what is about the synthesis of RNA? What is that called? Translation. Translation? Or, or no, transcription. 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 Yeah. Ah, transcription. Okay. Think of it like this when you get transcription and translation before you're able to properly translate. Let's say like somebody's telling a story in another language in order to properly translate it. You have to get the words down first. So you transcribe it first. You write it down first and then you translate it. Okay. Nice. Cool beans. During DNA replication, the RNA primer pieces are removed by which of the following? It's one of the polymers is, uh... Yeah, my guess is for A. 
It is correct. Yeah, it is the DNA polymerase one. Uh, what does topoisomerase do? Well, These are like, continue. this was like cells and tissues way back. <laughs> Kind of think I think I think within like the first like three weeks, three or four weeks, cells and tissues talks of it hits hits DNA pretty hard. So topoisomerase is responsible for the uncurling of the DNA. Does that ring a bell? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so the removing of the RNA primer pieces because when DNA is or when RNA is being trans tra, transcribed, it needs to lay down a primer first. It lays on the primer, so that way then um, the polymer, polymerase can attach a proper to the proper location and transcribe uh, down what it needs. Ooh. Exons. Exons, are they non coding or are they coding sequences? Exons coding. are coding. Yeah, exons are the coding sequences of the nucleotides. What are the non coding ones called? Uh, in, in yeah. yeah, introns. Exons and introns. Genetic information. AKA DNA, RNA, etc., are stored within proteins, carbohydrates, glycoproteins, or nucleic acids. Nucleic acid. Good job. Nucleic acids. What is the pathway that is used to give us the ribose sugar in order to build nucleic acids? Pentose phosphate path. Very good. Um, and before it is our ribose. What is the name of the sugar before ribose? Ribulose. Yeah. What's the other direction that it can take? Instead, of ribulose can turn into either ribose or what's the other name of the name of the other sugar? Xylose. Zylu xylulose, whatever it's called. Xylose. Very good. Identify the start codon. I hey. gave this answer earlier. Yeah. AUG and AUG codes for what amino acid? Methionine. Yeah, methionine. Remember that. That will come up over and over and over again, I promise. Mutations. Oh, this really jumps all over the place. It works, it's fine. In a point mutation. The entire sequence of nucleic acids are changed. DNA are converted to RNAs. A specific segment of DNA molecules converted to introns. Or the replacement of a single base nucleotide occurs with another nucleotide of the genetic material. Replacement of a single base nucleotide? Yeah, that is a point mutation because it mutates at a single point. Thought I had a sneeze. It might come back. I think it's in this one. What are some of the most common things that can cause mutations in our DNA? Radiation, chemical. What kind of toxin. radiation? Uh, ionizing radiation. Yeah, ionizing radiation, like X rays, right? That's why you'll learn in a lot of your radiology courses. There are very specific rules for when to take radiographs. <clears throat> like in the foot, there's the. Um, my brain is spacing is it's Canadian. Jeez. There's there's a set of, of ankle rules anyway. Ottawa. There it is. The Ottawa ankle rules. Good job, Brain. The Ottawa ankle rules where it's, there's like very specific things where um, if there's pain on palpation with on either of the malleoli or the base of the fifth met, uh, metatarsal, um, if the patient is not able to walk full weight bearing 
for at least four steps, that kind of stuff. Um, we'll determine whether or not to get x-rays. And there's also kind of a general rule of if the patient is over 50 years old, take an x-ray because chances are taking an x-ray, you're over 50, you're way more likely to have some kind of condition. That would be a, a no bueno. And honestly, the effects of their ionizing radiation probably aren't going to catch up to you before you die. So you'll learn all about those kind of rules later on. And then the other type of, of radiation that's super, super common is UV radiation for mutations. Um, we'll see if we get to a, a question about this, but there's a specific enzyme that deals with UV radiation, and, and it's its job to repair DNA from UV radiation. In a ribosome, A stands for blank, and P stands for which of the following? It's a, a amino acid and peptidyl. Yeah. In eukaryotes, the elongation stage of protein synthesis does not involve which of the following? I want to say DNA, but I feel like that's not right. That's correct. It's DNA. <laughs> when we talk about the elongation stage of protein synthesis, what what is that? What is the elongation stage? Let's review. So we start off at the very, very beginning with DNA, right? Then DNA, we decide that we want to make a protein. So DNA splits. We're going to split DNA up, uh, which separates its two. Have, we have our primer. We have the DNA polymerase, or the RNA polymerase, so that everything's going to come through, bind and connect, and then we form our RNA, right? <laughs> Specifically our mRNA. That mRNA is going to detach from the DNA, and where does it go? Well, let's say specifically we are in DNA, we are in the nucleus. Where does our mRNA go? Cytosol. Yeah, it's going to leave. It's going to go out to the cytosol. And it's specifically going to look for um, like the endoplasmic reticulum. Within okay. that endoplasmic reticulum, we're going to have the, the protein formation, specifically the, if we think like the rough ER versus the smooth ER. Mm -hmm. Do you remember... What differentiates the rough ER from the smooth ER? Presence of ribosomes. Yeah, the ribosomes. The rough ER has the ribosomes on it. And those ribosomes, that ribosomal RNA that we're going to need you know, to, to do this job. So we form the mRNA. We go out. We go towards the, the endoplasmic reticulum. <clears throat> and we get in there, and then we have that tRNA and the rRNA or the rRNA comes and it binds onto the mRNA, and then the, we have the tRNA that carries the amino acids and it's going to come and, and match up those codon anticodons. The tRNA, our transfer RNA, it's going to come, it's going to bring with it amino acid. The amino acid binds, and then it sh there's a whole process where it shifts down a row within the, ri within the ribosomal enzyme, to allow the next tRNA to come and bind, and then we get a bond that forms between our amino acids. What's that bond called? What kind of bond is it? A phosphodiester bond. Oh, and so, I'm sorry, peptide bonds. You're, I yeah. was thinking about. I was thinking about DNA. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, our peptide bonds, which is a type of covalent bonds so that forms elongation. That's that part of elongation is when we start to build. And we get we shift down and we get another tRNA that comes in bringing another amino acid and it binds and it shifts and it binds and it shifts and we start to elongate our protein 
are a polypeptide chain. Okay, so elongation involves the ribosomes, the tRNAs, and that amino acyl peptidyl transferase enzyme. Um, which, if you go back through, if you don't remember any of this stuff, go back and watch the videos that I have over these chapters. Like I go go through it all in the step by step kind of stuff. So. Introns, are they the coding or the non-coding? Non-coding. 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 Are they for proteins or nucleotides? Nucleotides. Nucleotides. Perfect. Bam. Done. mRNA is transcribed by which of the following? Remember transcribing? When we say transcribing, what does transcribing mean? Synthesizing it. Good. Yeah, we're writing it down. So which of the following transcribes mRNA? RNA polymerase two, two, one, two. It's, two. It's the polymerase two. Nice. There's a little chunk in the book that goes over all of the polymerases and, and exactly what each of them does. Um, I don't remember where it is, because this, this line is covers like the last three chapters of, of everything, so... Okazaki fragments are produced in the specific. First of all, this is happening during DNA replication, correct? Yes. So they are produced in the lagging strand of the DNA, the leading strand of the DNA, or in the RNA primers. Lagging strand. Yeah, the lagging strand of the DNA. Remember, because we have DNA. Right here, just like this, we have here a five prime. We have a three prime. Five prime, three prime. And this one, because we build DNA, what to what? Five to three. We build it five to three. So we're building DNA right here. We start, this is the five prime end. So we're building it five to three. So this can just continue. Straight all the way through, beautifully, no issues. But this one has to go opposite because it can't build from three prime to five prime. So we get these fragments where it builds and it builds and it builds this way, and then it comes back later and splices them together, right? Those mm -hmm. little bits before they're spliced are, are our Okazaki fragments. So these are here, these are called our lagging strands, the lagging strand of the DNA, because it lags behind a little bit. And the next question literally describes what I just said. Okazaki fragments or which of the following? Small sequences of nucleotides. <laughs> yeah. I love when that happens, when I go through and explain something, and it's literally the next question. Okay. Speaking of which, peptide bonds are formed in which phase of translation? <laughs> elongation. Uh, elongation. Gosh yeah. dang it. I keep giving y'all the answers. <laughs> Protein synthesis takes place on which of the following? Ribosomes. There we go. Ah. <laughs> uh, and so this takes place as, takes place on Still same thing again. Ribosomes. ribosomes. Ribosome. Yeah. Um, this might be a question later on, but those ribosomes most often are in that ER, um, that endoplasmic reticulum. And there's another organ that kind of acts as the FedEx driver for those proteins. So once their proteins are built and everything. Um, another cellular organ kind of packages them and then ships them where they need to go. Can you recall which organ that is? The Golgi apparatus? Yeah, the Golgi apparatus. Good job. See, like, a lot of this is very familiar at this point. Mm -hmm. 
replication takes place in which manner? Semi-conservative? Semi. Yeah, mm-hmm. semi-conservative. What does that mean? What does semi-conservative mean? My interpretation when he did the lecture is the idea that when copying a portion of the DNA, there's always one strand that is the original, and then there's a, a, a copy made. And so in some way, it's like semi-conservative because it's not two of the same, but yet it, it is based off of one. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's like this. So we have our original DNA strand, right? The OG original DNA strand. We know that this strand is a good strand. So what happens is this strand, when we replicate it, we split it into two. And we throw in a new copy on each side, just like that. So that's semi-conservative, where the original part of the strand is still there and now connected to a new copy of the other strand. And actually, this would look more like this. Keep it looking pretty. Right, and that's semi-conservative. And the reason why we do this on the semi-conservative is because then from here, we can con- can continue and we'll still have that same strand conserved like this. And what it does is it offers a better chance that these next strands are copied appropriately. That's why like the semi-conservative super so that is super important. So the parent strand, the very original OG strand, continues to get copied and passed down along and continues to have like to be part of the making of more and more new DNA. And like I said, that the purpose of that is to keep the DNA as proper and like pure as possible because we want our DNA to make our DNA to be as perfect as we can, as it can be to prevent us from having any like issues with, um, with creating proteins and other stuff. Sweet. The difference in RNA base compared to DNA bases is which of the following RNA contains U instead of T RNA contains U instead of G RNA contains A instead of U, or RNA contains A instead of T? Contains U instead of T. Yeah. So the mnemonics, remember, um, the base pairings is at the golf course. A goes to T, G goes to C, so we're at the golf course. And A pairs with T. Ooh... The bonds. Do you guys remember which has a single, which is a double bond? Or is it double, triple? I think it's one, two. I think GC has two bonds and AT has one bond, right? I believe so. I, I thought GC might have even three and then AT would have two. Yeah, mm-hmm. it might be. I know GC is the higher of the two, but I don't know if it's one, two, or yeah. two, three. GC has three, AT has two. Yeah. <coughs> I knew one was less than the other. Yeah, AT has two, GC has the three, um, and T gets replaced with U when we talk about RNA. He loves these questions. You'll get a good chunk of these on the test of like the complementary type stuff. The nucleotide sequence in one strand of DNA is three prime, blah, 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 all that. What would be the nucleotide sequence in the complementary RNA strand? Well, it's RNA, so it's going to be UAC, GGG, CUA. Bam, right there. Where these can get tricky, sometimes, and we'll see if he does it later on, Sometimes he'll add 
like what is the complementary RNA strand listed three prime to five prime? Mm. So then it would be it would still be like this answer, except it would be reversed. It would be A U C G G G C A U. 